All right, guys, time for another serious video game vlog. And actually, one of the topics that I enjoy the most, I actually do enjoy this kind of topic that I've talked about before. I know I've made a few videos on it before, but I got this new microphone and people say it's easier to listen to. And I've actually been asked to talk about it on stream multiple times just yesterday again. So let's talk about this and add these sort of theories together. And it's the theories, these sort of ideas of why a fighting game needs a easily digestible narrative for the casual player all the way to the advanced player, you know, to be able to digest, to be able to tell what's going on. And to accomplish this, often you need, you need things like overpowered characters. You know, you need some characters that are stronger than others. You need characters that show off the idea and the beauty of the game, right? And sometimes... When a game can finally do this, a game can take off, like Guilty Gear did. So what I'm getting at is, okay, let's talk about this, narratives and why powerful OP characters are important. We take a game like Super Turbo, right? Super Turbo at the time was a very important game, maybe in the fighting game community, because in that game you saw the clash of ideologies of say, the Fireball Dragon Punch Trap, the old school player that liked the Fireball Dragon Punch Trap, right? And the characters that were, the people that were getting tired of that sort of gameplay, they wanted to rush down, you know what I mean? They didn't want to be, they don't like all that shit, right? And who were two characters that were very powerful, right, in that game? So you would take a character like Old Sagat, Fireball Dragon Punch Trap, right? We, that's easily digestible for a player getting into the game, right? We can see why this is strong. And then another character that is good in Super Turbo would be, say, a character like Balrog. He represents this ideology of, you know, going against that old school mentality of the Fireball Dragon Bunch Trap, right? His super was very powerful. Throw loops, all this kind of stuff. He's rushing you down, right? These are two characters that show off, in a sense, Super Turbo really well. It, they show off what Super Turbo could be. The narrative of the game is easily digestible for the casual player to a more advanced player, perhaps, right? You see, wow, this is why Fireball Dragon Punches are, are powerful. This is a character that is abusing, maybe, quotation marks, you know, the game system. His super is powerful, right? Throw loops, whatever. We can see these, this clash, right? And so it's a very important narrative, and it's a narrative that showed off the game to people, right? You can appreciate what's going on, right? And because they're powerful, you got to see it a lot, right? It's easily digestible, right? Because it's in your face a lot if you were to watch the game, that those sort of narratives, right? So then an example for this I've given, look at a game like Guilty Gear, right? Guilty Gear did not succeed until it could find a narrative that was easily digestible, right? And this also gets into why core fundamentals of what made fighting games popular in the first place are very important to be in all fighting games now, right? So what I'm getting at, look at a series like Guilty Gear, right? Guilty Gear was just surviving until XX. It did not actually succeed until XX. Before XX, it was just surviving. It survived off the idea that it, it was a game that had its own vibe, right? It survived enough to warrant a sequel, but it was not actually succeeding in the eyes of the video game community, right? It was still just an anime game to a lot of people in the fighting game community, right? What was the narrative of Guilty Gear? The narrative of Guilty Gear would be very hard to explain to a casual player, probably, right? It would just be like, oh, it's got its own vibe. It's a anime game, for better or worse. And worse in this case, right? Look at a game like X. X is, you know, at the time, a very beautiful game. Again, it has its own vibe. But how do you... What is the narrative of X? And how do you make it easily digestible to a player watching it, right? You're like, oh, FDC? Oh, Johnny Mistrap? And you're like, oh, what the fuck? Like, oh, chain combos? You know, the Street Fighter player is already against chain combos. They see this Mistrap. They say FDC... You know, they're like, man, what is going on? Where is the Street Fighter in Guilty Gear? What can I appreciate here, right? 
So Guilty Gear was only surviving until that point. But Guilty Gear finally succeeded in XX because I, I've talked about this before. The Dust Loop saved Guilty Gear. Soul saved Guilty Gear. Because Soul, although Soul wasn't, you know, top tier, he was he was a good character. He was a good enough character that he was in the narrative of the game, that he was being played enough that people could see the game. And through Soul, people were able to understand Guilty Gear. They were able to see the narrative of it. They were able to see the potential beauty of it, right? Because they could see the Street Fighter in Guilty Gear. And what I mean by that is because Soul was a more played character, let's look at how, let's look at a common sort of a core kind of fundamental concept of what one of Soul's game plans might be, right? It would be the Dragon Punch RC if it hits into Dust Loop, or if they block, throw into Dust Loop. Now, on a certain perspective, this is also a fundamental perspective that everyone that likes fighting games or knows of fighting games can digest they can appreciate appreciate it because in street fighter we have the core sort of fundamental idea of dragon punch throw <laughs> yeah am i gonna dragon punch i'm gonna throw you right but guilty gear brought it to a new step and because soul was a more powerful character in that game powerful enough that he was in the narrative of the game it allowed the casual audience to digest the game and they got to learn what guilty gear was about by watching soul soul runs up he does a dragon punch he rc's it the casual player learns about the RC. It's like, okay, Guilty Gear has this RC mechanic, right? Then he runs in. If it's blocked, he throws you. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like, oh, so this is the Street Fighter part of it, right? And then he does a dust loop, which is a link. So it's not just the chain combo. So the Street Fighter person can appreciate it because the Street Fighter person doesn't like chain combos. They like links, right? Just like if it wasn't blocked, it hits. He runs up. He does a kick to a duck hard slash. It's a chain combo. The Street Fighter person is against it, but you're still learning about the game by seeing that chain combo. Then he jumps up. And you're like, okay, I'm learning about jump cancels, right? Then he does the dust loop, which is a link. And you're like, okay, so the Street Fighter person is like, I can appreciate the Street Fighter and Guilty Gear now. I can appreciate the sort of progression of Street Fighter, the sort of core fundamental aspect that we understand from Street Fighter it's a new take on Guilty Gear. And to accomplish it in Guilty Gear, we have to learn about Guilty Gear. Do you get what I'm saying? So it was able to be appreciated by the masses. And that's when finally Guilty Gear started to succeed as a fighting game. Before it was just surviving. But XX helped it succeed because there was a narrative in the game that was being shown enough that also taught the player the game. Does that make sense? Do you get what I'm saying? That's why narratives are important in a game. That's why fundamentals are important in games. Because if you, because these core fundamental aspects of fighting games, we all appreciate them. Well, maybe you don't. A lot of people don't like Dragon Punch, so I guess maybe not everyone, right? But these core fundamental aspects are still what made fighting games popular in the first place. That's why they need to be in all games, right? Because it's something that at least is in your heart that you understand this is how fighting games work, right? I've, show, I've talked about games before that have bad narratives, games that maybe are not as well received, right? Because the game doesn't have a good narrative. And I use this example. I'm not using this example because, you know, the Japanese told me I'm the best in the world before the game. I'm using it because it is a good example. Karnov's Revenge, right? Karnov's Revenge is a game that has a very... I'm not saying Karnov's Revenge is the best game ever. I've said before, Connor's Revenge is a game that is a, is a clusterfuck. It runs a very fine line between being deceptively skillful and extremely scrub a dub. But what is the narrative of Connor's Revenge? Look at the most powerful game, the characters in the game that are shown off in that game. The only character in that game that is shown a lot, right? Now, again, I've said before, Mizuguchi is a fucking amazing character. You know, I'm very proud that I was able to demolish all these people, you know, to the point I was told I was the best in the world before, right? Doing all these combos with Mizuguchi that people said would not happen, right? And I was doing them off random hits, not off dizzies, right? Aiming dizzy spots, just doing crazy shit. Mizuguchi and Karnov in that game are actually amazing characters if you think about the time frame when that game was made. Those characters are actually fucking incredible, right? But Mizuguchi isn't a good enough character that he's in the limelight of the game, right? Karnov is an interesting character, right? And he is good. But think of the other characters in the narrative of that game. 
that is being digested by the casual player. Ray. Ray does not show off the game well. Ray is... Do you think Ray shows off the potential beauty of Karno's revenge well? No, he doesn't, dude. He doesn't show the game off well. Zazie? Zazie is actually not even just in the game. Zazie is one of the most scrub-a-dub, broken, stupid characters ever in a fighting game, period. Someone watching Zazie is not going to be impressed by the game. Lee. Lee is a little bit better, but Lee is not going to... You're not going to watch Lee and be like, man, this game is amazing, right? You're not going to look at a character like Gene and be like, oh, man, this game is amazing, right? But if you think of the two most amazing characters in that game, potentially, would be a character like Karnoff, which he is good, so at least he's a little bit in the narrative, right? And a character like Mizuguchi, who is, you know, just mid-tier. He's not in the narrative. Again, who's doing all that crazy shit with him besides me? There has only been a couple other Japanese guys ever that have even attempted the stuff I've done, and they do it off dizzies. Not off random hits like I showed was possible, right? So Karno's Revenge failed as a game, in a sense, because the narrative is not good for the game. You can't appreciate the game because it's not being shown to you, right? And, you know, it does suck that I'm not saying the games need to be broken, but it's important that a character that is in the limelight of the game needs to be able to show off the game because it shows off the product. If the characters that show off the product aren't good, how do you show off the product? Do you get what I'm saying? That's why narratives are important in fighting games. Like, that's why I've talked about Dragon Ball Fighter Z as well. Why is Dragon Ball Fighter Z a failure as a game? And you might be like, well, Dragon Ball Fighter Z isn't a failure of a game. And I would tell you, dude, Dragon Ball Fighter Z is succeeding as a series because it's Dragon Ball Z. Look at games like Super Butoden Fuck My Shit, whatever it's called, right? Dude, there were multiple of that game. Do you think that game is the most... Look at Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22. Do you think there's all these Dragon Ball Z games because they were amazing? They succeeded because of the brand, right? They didn't succeed because of the actual game. Now, I'm not saying Dragon Ball Fighter Z is as bad as that, but if you look at the narrative of Dragon Ball Fighter Z, how many people do you see people talking about the game and the way it works in a good way? You don't. You see people like, oh man, the homely dash crossed me up. Like, oh man, the auto combo tracked me the wrong way. Oh man, why is only this character can do double super? Oh god, like, you know what I mean? People don't talk about Dragon Ball Fighter Z in a good way when they talk about it, generally speaking. I'm not saying everybody hates it. But Dragon Ball Z is succeeding as a series because it's Dragon Ball Z. It's not succeeding because of the game itself. When you see people talk about the game, they're not like, oh, yes, my auto combo crossed up. Oh, my homing dash crossed, blah, blah, blah. They're talking about the game in a negative way, dude. And I've already given my opinion on all this. You know, at the end of the day, actually, the way they do auto combos is actually, hey, for what they were given, it's actually done well. You know, you know don't shoot the messenger, dude. I'm just telling you if you're actually looking at what they were given. But that's why I say Dragon Ball Fighter Z actually fails as a game because there's not characters to actually show off the beauty of the game. The most interesting part of the game is the fireball homing dash reflecting tug of war. And that's why I've showed off in videos. I've tried to show, imagine if a character like Vegito with all those, the Banshee blast ideas, you know what I mean? If he actually had an EX version of the move, it would make the opponent hesitate. So these Banshee blast things could work as a poke string and all this kind of stuff. And then there would actually be characters that show off the tug of war show off the potential beauty of the game dragon ball fighter z does not have characters that are showing off the narrative of what the game can be super turbo is a game that shows off what the game can be dragon balls drag or fireball dragon punch trap it appeals to the old school player perhaps it likes this it appeals to the characters that want this new... They don't like the fireballs and dragon, but they want to rush down. They want throw loops. They want, you know, supers, powerful moves. Boom, 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 right? Something can have such a strong influence on the match, right? A, a fireball, a dragon punch mix... A dragon punch to a throw mix-up has such a strong influence on a match. It's showing you what the game can be. Guilty Gear did not have that until Soul. Soul, they could appreciate the Street Fighter and Guilty Gear. They could be like, wow, something so powerful. This Street Fighter fundamental has such a strong influence on the match. And it's also teaching me about Guilty Gear at the same time. I'm learning about the game. Karna's Revenge doesn't have that narrative. It has a couple of cool characters, 
but they're not in the limelight enough, a character like Mizuguchi, to see like, wow, look at Clayton. He's like aiming dizzy spots. You can do that? That's insane. Like, what is going on? You know, like, you're like, whoa, holy shit. But that's not a character unless you watch my matches. Saw me destroying the Japanese doing that. You're like, wow, dude, that's possible? Because Mizuguchi just isn't a good character like that to be in the limelight that he's getting played like that, right? Dragon Ball Fighter Z. These fundamentals don't even exist in the game. Of, you know what I mean? It should. That's like, you know, you can't be destroying fundamentals of Street Fighter and video games. It's terrible. So hopefully what I'm getting... I know I've talked about this topic multiple times. But it's a topic that is actually very important in fighting games, right? And it's a topic I get asked to talk about often. And now I talked about it with my new mic. Shh. ASMR. So anyway... That's the video. Hopefully you guys liked it. Don't know if I'll make another one because I think this is like the third or fourth video. Hopefully it sounds better with this. Hopefully you guys get what I'm talking about. And I can talk about I can talk about the other things progression of fighting games as well again. Put in the comments what uh, conversation or topic I've talked about before that you want to hear again with this new mic and we'll talk about it because again there's not a lot of video game stuff to do as it is right now. The end.